Welcome to episode number one of Software Sophistication, a Q&A show about the general life of building software, but also specifically about building software in the Elixir and Phoenix ecosystem. So Joe, what is our first question? Ovid asks, I'm looking for an online host to start cutting my teeth on a personal live view app. Would a digital ocean droplet be a good option for that? I am of the opinion that 90% of software applications can be deployed to a PaaS, also known as a PaaS, also known as a platform as a service. The vast majority of software, so I've, in my career as a consultant, I've worked on multiple dozens of applications and I would say the vast majority of them did not need to be deployed in a custom fashion to AWS, Amazon Web Services, or Google Cloud. The vast majority of them could use an off-the-shelf service that makes deploying your software to the cloud easy and you can do it within 10 to 15 minutes. So there's services that uh, are specific for the Elixir ecosystem or generally that you can use, which are Gig Elixir, Render, uh, Heroku, there's a new player on the block called Fly.io. I don't know much about Fly.io, but I can speak on, on the first three. So the vast majority of my career as a Ruby on Rails consultant, I used Heroku. Heroku is uh, powerful. They got acquired by Salesforce uh, many years ago. Uh, I would recommend it for all ecosystems. I personally use Render.com. It's a, also a new kit on the block. Uh, Heroku, over time, became much more of a walled garden as that, that Salesforce publicly traded money. Um, they were trying to get, essentially, they, they just got rid of the free plan. Heroku is an excellent solution. It's very polished. Uh, I prefer Render because it's more scrappy. Um, and I have all of the applications that we work on at Or Equals, my software consultancy, we deploy them to Render.com. We've used Gig Elixir in the past, which is actually a platform as a service specifically for Elixir applications themselves. And they have absurdly good customer service, but it is a very clunky platform and they're not innovating at all in my experience. The user interface for it hasn't changed in two or three years. Uh, I sent them a long email about three or four different things that I think that needed to change over at Gig Elixir. So I cannot personally recommend Gig Elixir. I recommend something like Render or Heroku. And at Or Equals, we use Render.com for all of our platform deployments. So just to finish, you can deploy to DigitalOcean, um, but I would recommend using a platform as a service for the vast majority of software applications. Esteban says, hey, Josh, how are you? Recently, I started watching your videos on YouTube. You have a cool vibe, man. Question, how did you learn Phoenix slash LiveView? Esteban, thank you for saying that I have a very cool vibe and thank you for your question. I think it's a very good one given that Elixir and Phoenix LiveView are kind of rising in popularity. So I can give you a long-winded answer uh, because my journey was long-winded. I read the programming Elixir book. I read the programming Phoenix book cover to cover. Um, there was a certain time when I was sitting on my couch, I was eating spaghetti, and there's, uh, if you look at the side of this book, there's a, almost like an orangish stain that was, for some reason I had spaghetti on my hands and I was, open, I was rifling through the book. I read this cover to cover, Programming Phoenix. So I actually don't recommend any, uh, I went through CodeWars.com, I was going through coding challenges. Uh, I've probably gone through six, seven, nine, ten different tools and ecosystems. Grox.io for learning Phoenix Live View. Um, I've read a ton of books, but to cut to the chase, the most efficient way that to learn Elixir in Phoenix and Phoenix Live View, uh, so at or equals my software consultancy, we have an apprenticeship program where in a six month span, I take somebody off the street effectively and I turn them into somebody who is a world-class custom software consultant. And what I do is there's a website called Pragmatic Studio. PragmaticStudio.com has a bundled course for buying an Elixir course and a Phoenix Live View course. And it's $229, so I know that's not cheap, but within two to four weeks, the apprentices go through the, both the Elixir and the Phoenix Live View courses, and it is the most efficient way to learn Elixir and Phoenix. So in the Elixir course, you build like a web server from scratch. You effectively build a web framework. So not only are you learning Elixir concepts, but you're also learning how the internet actually works. Like you, you learn in that course how like a TLS handshake happens. Like it's very uh, to the metal type learning uh, as you're uh, learning Elixir concepts. 
So then you stack that onto the Phoenix Live View course, you can literally be up and running. Um, w within a month, typically, the apprentices go through that and they're still trash at software development, but they have, like, it, what you're seeking is to get exposure to all the concepts. So I would recommend, uh, I can give you a ton of recommendations. There's a lot of different options, but the premier way, the fastest way is to go to Pragmatic Studios, Elixir, and Phoenix Live. Of course, that is literally what we do at the, at, at or equals my software consultancy. This is not a paid endorsement. It's legitimately just the best option online. Amber asks, I want to make sure I'm doing my best in the job process at presenting myself. Any tips would be great. So when job searching, how do I present myself in the best light, essentially? Yes. So a little bit of context here. This is a question from Amber who I met. This is from two years ago. I was giving a clubhouse presentation and Amber and I connected on Twitter. She was going through a software boot camp at the time and she was going to graduate soon and she was wondering how best to position herself for job placement thereafter. So number one, if you're at a boot camp and you're spending 12 grand or 20 grand on a boot camp, you really want to be in one that has a good placement program. So a lot of these boot camps, a few of them have it where you actually don't pay anything at all and they take like a portion of your salary when you come out of school. So all that being said, uh, if you're wanting to get, just to take a side approach to this, uh, if you do want to get into software development um, and you're thinking about the boot camp option, I do recommend it. I did not go through a boot camp myself, but I, I have seen there was a really bad boot camp. So I'm going to say their name. I don't know if that's a bad idea or not. Uh, Tech Talent South here in Jacksonville. Um, and they were pretty, there were a lot of people at Ruby Jacks going, Ruby Jacks is the local Ruby coding language meetup. Uh, maybe six or seven years ago, a lot of Ru brand new Rubyists were going to Tech Talent South. And it was a really sketchy program. Like the recent, the grand, the brand new graduates were teaching the the brand new cohorts, and like there was no placement program. It was a really bad boot camp, from my estimation. But at the end of the day, the people that I knew at Ruby Jacks that were going through it, they are professional uh, software engineers to this day. Like six years later, you know, there's uh, their senior developers, their developer leads at this point. So it doesn't really matter. Um, what you really care about is just getting the experience. So. Um, when you want to present yourself in the marketplace, Amber, is uh, you want to make sure you have the goods at the end of the day. So if you're not going to a boot camp, you want to make sure that you're studying two to three hours every night for months at a time. Like breaking into this field is not a joke. If that's not something that you're really ready to commit to, you know, it's you know this probably should. This is the first software sophistication episode. This probably should be your last because if you're not willing to put in the effort, there's no way to make it in this field. Um, other than that, how do you position yourself? My primary recommendation, say you, you, you're doing the work, is to attend tech meetups. So you want to go, you want to network with people, meet other developers. Make sure you're not thirsty though. Don't go there and be like, hey, I'm here and I'm trying to get a job. You want, just be passive, make friends. People are going to naturally, if you're putting in the work, it's naturally going to come out in your conversation and somebody's going to pick up on that and want to and wanna hire you. There's a mass of software that needs to be written, written, and there's only uh, so many people that do it. So breaking into this career, if you have the goods, uh, it's all about knowing people at that point. And so you want to go to places where people who have tech jobs at their disposal are going, which are tech meetups. You want to go either give a speech about learning how you learn to code, but just go there and network. And you know, the opportunity will come. Don't, don't, force, don't force it. All right, those are all of our questions. Do you have anything to wrap up? Yeah, so this is the first episode, Joe. This is uh, pretty fun. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments here on YouTube or LinkedIn. I don't know where this is being posted as of right now. You can send me a Twitter DM. You can send me a LinkedIn DM. You can send me an email at josh or equals .com. You, If you send me a question, I will make sure to get it answered here on Software Sophistication. So I guess that's it. Signing off. Signing off.